first of all, off, before we start properly, uh, we'd like to invite you to take part in this first interactive activity of the evening. So if you head to the meeting chat, uh, there should be a link which will take you to the Mentimeter website. And if you go in there, you'll be asked a question. The other thing you can do if, if that link isn't working or you want to do something else, uh, another way of doing it, you can head to menti.com. Um, so you can either do this on your computer or you can use your phone as well. It works really well on, on a mobile phone, on a browser there. Um, I've used it lots of times um, that way. Um, and use the code 403067. You can enter that way as well and you'll be asked a question. What one thing do you think you could do to save energy? Um, so if you can answer that, it's, it feeds into a word cloud which will appear on your screen, on your mentee screen, which I think is yes, it's just come up on the screen here now as well. Um, so yes, if you could do that. So there's a link in the chat and also uh, if you go to mentee.com, and use the code 403067. That'd be great. Ah, oh, we've got oh, some coming, coming up now. Up now. Okay, okay, so there's, there's some... Also, um, could everybody mute themselves, please? So I can hear some feedback when I'm speaking. That'd be great. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, 40 years, nearly 40 years. Okay. So we've got uh, reduce is, is coming up in the center. We're more clothes at home. Shower light bulbs. Uh, we've got lots more coming through. Fantastic. Okay, keep adding things in. This is really good. You can see it coming up on the screen. Insulate, that's a really good one. Shower, yes, showering instead of bathing. Um, that that's instead of having a bath, uh, that that's a good one. Uh, okay. Oh, ah, there we are. So yeah, shower, reduce, insulate, heating. Heating's a really big one. Um, if you um, can reduce the, the heating you need for your home. You'll reduce the energy use. Um, so that, that's a really good one. Uh, we've also got lots of things coming up around the size. Thermostat, uh, turn down heating, community energy, uh, turn off the tap, solar panels as well, which we'll be talking about in, in, in a little while. Drive less. That's less for the home, but um, that's still a, a good thing. OK, has everybody put something in there? Or should we? I think we might give it another 30 seconds or so. That'd be good. And we can see what's coming through. OK, better insulated windows. Yep, that's really good. I can see that in there. When we close at home, I think I've mentioned that. OK, fantastic. Thank you very much. That's really good. So I think that the main ones you can see on there um, insulate insulation, so it's about insulating your home and, and reducing the heat you need to, and keeping the heat in. Uh, drive less, which is about sort of reducing your emissions outside the home, um, especially if you drive a, a, a petrol or diesel car, that, that certainly drives down um, carbon emissions. Um, there's heating, which again linked to the insulation. Shower, reduce, just generally reducing is, is a good thing uh, in terms of reducing your energy use. Um, I'm, I'll explain a bit about that. So yeah, that's um, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. That's a really good response. And uh, what we can do is is we can um, share that with everyone um, after the meeting as well, so we can send that around. So thank you very much. I, I hope that was uh, interesting for you to to see all that sort of coming up. 
Um, so that, that, yeah, that's really good. Thank you very much. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to do a very quick presentation just to kind of introduce the topic of energy and also talk a little bit about um, what we as a councillor are, are doing around helping residents to reduce their energy as well. So I'll just do that now. Just going to have to wait because my computer has been quite slow. Okay, right. Right, I hope that everyone can see that. Yep, I think that's working. Uh, so, uh, as I said, my name is Andrew Hager and uh, welcome to the uh, Energy Climate Conversation. So, why is energy important? Well, everybody uses energy every day in their homes. A bunch of the electricity we use is generated from fossil fuels, which contribute to climate change. So I had a check and at four o'clock today, the uh, National Grid's energy mix was 62.6% fossil fueled, 27.5% renewables and 10% low carbon, which is basically nuclear power. So you can see that uh, if you were running anything at four o'clock today, then 62.6% of that was fueled by fossil fuel was powered by fossil fuels, which obviously contributes to climate change. Um, gas is uh, also used for um, cooking and heating, and that's a fossil fuel as well. And it's also a major source of greenhouse gases. So reducing our energy can cut our carbon footprint. So what about uh, energy use and carbon emissions in Wandsworth? Well, nearly half of Wandsworth carbon emissions are from domestic energy use. You can see this table here is 47.8% uh, on domestic energy use. And about 70% of that, 47%, is from gas use in the home. Uh, so it's important that we all think about our energy use. And using less energy can help reduce your carbon emissions as well as reducing your bills. So what can you do? Uh, we're going to outline some of the things Wandsworth Council is doing to help people reduce their energy use and switch to low carbon energy. Also, we'll hear from some experts. So we've got Toby from Crew, who's going to talk a little bit more about uh, what you can do. And also, I think we have some quite knowledgeable people in this room as well, which hope, who hopefully can share some of their experience as well. And then we can have a conversation about what we all can do to reduce our energy and to reduce our carbon emissions. So first of all, I wanted to talk about the Green Homes Grant. So this is provided by central government. Uh, it, the funding is, uh, and it's funding to support the retrofit of homes. So Wandsworth has secured funding to deliver energy efficiency and low carbon heating for 120 homes across the borough. This is different, and I really need to stress this, this is different from the Green Homes Grant voucher scheme, which is run by central government. And you might have heard about that. There's been some publicity recently around it, about how it's in trouble and stuff like that. Um, our scheme is separate from that. We already have the funding. We have it all set up. So um, it's different and we think it is um, better as well. Uh, so uh, I'll just talk a bit more about what we're doing with that scheme. So what's our offer? You can get up to £10,000 worth of improvements for your home if you meet the criteria. So that's £10,000 for those uh, that are own occupiers and for those that are in private rented accommodation or for private landlords, uh, then it's £5,000 and there needs to be a contribution from the landlord. The scheme is targeted to those with lower incomes and in lower energy efficient properties. Um, and these households may need help with affordable warmth. So it could be that uh, the home is very energy efficient, uh, energy inefficient, sorry, and therefore it requires more energy to heat the home and therefore it makes it expensive. If you're already on low income, it can be then difficult to afford to heat your home. Um, so the improvements made will make your home warmer and also reduce your energy bills and it will also reduce your carbon emissions. Uh, so the eligibility criteria, these are set by um, central government and so we have, it's a kind of condition of our funding that the all the people going through the scheme need to fulfill this. So you need to be either an own occupier or in private rented accommodation. 
the household income must be under £30,000 per year. The property must have an EPC rating, that's an energy performance certificate rating of D, E, F or G. And you, this is really important. You need to be willing to have the work done to your property. Um, it, it will involve some people coming around to have a look at the property, to double check everything and, and suggest improvements. And also you are going to need to have work done on your property to make those improvements. So you need to be willing to do that as well. Um, OK, so what can you have installed? Uh, there's lots and lots of things, and this is uh, one of the advantages that we have with our scheme compared to the voucher scheme, is that we can do a lot more with it um, than the voucher one. Um, so you can have insulation put in, so external wall insulation, internal wall, roof insulation, underfloor uh, insulation, or a combination of any of those. Uh, you can also have air source heat pumps. So this uses electricity to transfer heat from one place to another and to heat water. Um, it's kind of like a fridge in reverse. Um, you can also have double glazing. Uh, this reduces heat loss and cuts drafts. And also solar PV. So this uh, is photovoltaic panels. Um, so it's the panels that you solar panels you see on roofs, and this produces electricity for your home. Uh, heat and controls. This can be really important. So you can better control the temperature of your home and use less energy. And I think Toby's going to talk a bit more about that. Um, and also solar thermal, which provides hot water heated by the sun. One thing I do need to note is that you can't have your gas boiler replaced by a new gas boiler using this scheme. So the idea behind this is, uh, is around energy efficiency and reducing people's bills, but it's also about reducing carbon emissions. And so uh, the funding isn't intended to be used to replace one fossil fuel energy source with another fossil fuel energy source. And so you can't have a gas boiler replaced by another gas boiler. So what happens if you apply to the scheme? So first of all, we need to check you're eligible. We need to check your EPC rating. We need to check that you your income is below £30,000. And then our delivery partner will carry out a free home assessment and discuss your options. They'll then arrange the delivery of the works with Trustmark contractors and check the work. So Trustmark contractors are those that um, are have gone through the Trustmark accreditation process, which means there's stuff around, um, they're using the correct equipment, uh, they are working in a sustainable way, and also around customer service as well. So you know that that's a mark of quality that, that you're getting. And then we'll pay for the work because we have the funding from the government to do this. Uh, and this makes it much, much easier for you to get the improvements that you want done to your home. And also, I just want to, to let you know that we know you may have worries about COVID. Um, obviously, uh, that that's, a concern that many, many, many people have. So all work is going to be done in a way to minimise the risk. So our delivery partner has uh, an, a, an active risk assessment that they carry out as before they go to the property and then as they are working at the property, they kind of do uh, a, a dynamic risk assessment is called. So they, they will be assessing what's happening as they're doing the work and making sure that you're safe and also they're safe as, as workers as well. So just want to reassure you about that. So if you want to apply for funding, we've already sent out letters to some people, I say some, we've contacted over a thousand people um, with letters and, and a leaflet with it as well, illustrating what, what you can do with the scheme. Um, and that's been contact, that's been directed at those that we think might be eligible. Um, but if you haven't had a letter, that's fine. Get in touch with us if you are interested and you think you might be eligible. So you can email us at greenhomesgrant at wandsworth.gov.uk or you can go to wandsworth.gov.uk forward slash GHG. And we have a member of staff who's working on the Green Homes Grant and is available to answer questions you might have as well. Um, so another thing we're doing is something called Solar Together. And this is a London-wide group buying scheme for solar panels. So ones with residents can save on their energy bill and generate your own clean electricity. Uh, and because you'll be buying as a group, you can get a more competitive offer. Uh, the offer is a complete solar panel system. So that's a survey, installation, monitoring, warranties, and also battery storage, which is really great. So it works by, uh, as you can see on the screen, so there's registration. So you need to register before 23rd of March for free and without obligation online. Um, so the more people that are involved, the better, because it's a group buying scheme. So um, basically you, you all buy together and because there's volume there, you get a discount. And then there's going to be an auction on 23rd of March where installers can submit bids. And then basically the most competitive package will win the auction. 
and then you'll get a personal recommendation which we sent to you based on your registration details and that'll give you costs and specifications for your installation and then you can decide if you want to go ahead with it so you don't have to continue if you decide actually this isn't for me the cost isn't right or actually i i don't think this is right for, for me right now that's fine not a problem you can pull out and if you want to continue then you can continue and you've got up until 21st of may to decide and then if you accept then the installer will come and install it and they're going to do all of the installations by the end of October 2021. So if you're interested in solar panels on your roof, if you've thought about it before, but you thought, oh, I'm not sure about the cost, please do sign up. So you can find out more at uh, solartogether.co.uk forward slash Wandsworth, or you can email london at solartogether.co.uk, or you can call this number here, um, Monday to Friday, eight between eight and five. And the number is 0800 060 8509. And that's it from me. So I hope that's been uh, informative and helpful. Um, and I am just going to stop sharing now. OK, so hopefully we're back onto the, the chat. Um, and now I'm going to invite Toby to um, have a chat with you as well about some of the um, other things that you can do um, to save energy. So, Toby. Thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, shall I share my screen? Uh, can you see that one? Yeah, 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 we can. Great. So uh, very quickly, who we are, we're your local friendly community group um, and uh, we're a not for profit entity uh, and we work on two things, really helping people develop renewable energy and energy efficiency schemes in southwest London. And we also run uh, an outreach arm. So we'll be looking at things like energy cafes of so fuel poverty issues, um, uh, debt on meters, how to energy savings advice, a whole range of, of sessions. And typically we do those face to face because of COVID, we convert that to a, an online phone service. So if you need help, check our website out and, and we can uh, probably assist. We also do um, some work on awareness of climate action. Uh, and we often do that through things like eco action games, so giant snakes and ladders, higher and low and things like that. We've mainly aimed that, that service at children so far, but we would love to do some adult sessions, see how adults kind of enjoy learning this way as well. So that's very quickly us. So just thinking about your home and, and the carbon you're consuming, that there's been lots of conversations and we saw that sort of walking and things like that and I'm sure that the council are going to have many more sessions on green spaces and transport and diet as well which is a, a, even more important really the, the, than this but as a starting point just give you an idea of the what, what you might be consuming these are typical numbers that you might get from Ofgem or Energy Savings Trust on what people consume so roughly 15,000 kilowatt hours of heat and that breaks down uh, with space heating and hot water heating and and that may vary depending on on your individual circumstances but this is a a standard say three bedroom home is is what they would expect so you're looking around about 3.2 tons of carbon uh to that, that that you're consuming having a gas boiler and then electricity wise it's around about three and a half thousand kilowatt hours and that's you know 0.8 of a ton so overall we're looking at four tons of carbon a standard household will consume. Now, how can we get rid of some of that? There's a very nice little graphic there of trees equivalent. So you can see how many trees a year that you're uh, you're chewing up, really. Uh, first thing people always say is fabric first. And uh, I won't spend too much time on the slide, but I know these will be handed out just so you had the information. Um, but the main thing is you lose a lot through your walls. And um, frustratingly, that's incredibly expensive uh, for, for a lot of us living in Southwest London because we live in solid brick homes. So you can easily expect to spend in a terraced house £8,000 to insulate the front and the back of, of your property. Um, so it's a lot and that will save you 35% on your on your space heating, which might only be £200 a year. So it can be very, very long paybacks, which is why I think we, we're going to see more. We're going to see more from the government to make those kind of measures work. 
things that are easier if you have a cavity it will be a whole lot cheaper to to fill that cavity you know you might only be looking at 750 a thousand pounds to to fill a cavity um but smaller measures are things like loft insulation and the current re recommendations on loft insulation are 270 mill millimeters so um i'll rush through this slide very quickly but that's a rough guide on all, all the different areas and, and rough costs and what you, each of those would cost um in terms of renewables, there's two things really. We've got renewable generation, we've got renewable heat. So heat pumps, which um, Andrew's already touched upon, are the government's desired method for decarbonizing heat in homes. Uh, there's a lot of talk about carbon, uh, uh, sorry, about hydrogen, but hydrogen's some way behind in terms of pricing. And I think a lot of that is, is being driven by the owners of the gas grid, which is Cadent and SGN, wanting to keep in business really. But the, research i've been reading it, it doesn't look like you can get to parity on heat um, on uh, to gas until say 2040 so we're quite a long way off from that so the government's looking to have 600,000 heat pumps a year to be installed over the next 10 uh, up to 2030 so it's a hell of a target they're not really giving enough to support but what we do have for the next year is something called the renewable heat incentive so what that gives you is 10.54 p currently and it does have degradations um over the next seven years if you install a heat pump and that is based on what you consume or what is your deemed consumption of space heating and water heating basis your epc so you do have a known number in year one of what you will receive thereafter that's index linked to inflation so for a, for a standard home that maybe gets as high as twenty thousand kilo hours you can actually get twelve thousand pounds back on your uh, on your uh, uh, um, RHI over a seven year cycle. So other things to think about when you're looking at heat pumps is how well insulate your home is. Heat pumps run at a lower flow temperature than your gas boiler, which might be running at 75, 80. If you've got a condensing boiler, that should be running around about 60 and returning at 50, otherwise it's not condensing. These things run around about 50, 55 at, at a maximum level. So you may have to chunk up your radiators, you may have to improve your insulation, maybe improve your windows so that you can run that lower flow. You might also run a lower temperature over a longer period as another way of, of managing the, the, the heat load in your home. So they're factors to think about. Um, one other thing is where you're going to place your heat pump. Now, these things are about a meter long uh, and about a meter high and about 400, 500 mil deep. So they're pretty chunky units. They're, they're increasingly getting smaller and increasingly looking better. So it's quite a nice image there. And I think the one Andrew had is a very nice looking unit that he put a picture up on. Now, you do need to be a meter away on your boundary walls either side. So that's a really big factor. So you can eat at the front of the house may be an issue, especially in conservation areas. I've seen comments on conservation areas for solar PV, and that is a factor. Um, but this is this is a technology that we are moving towards. And what we're seeing is ever increasing efficiencies, particularly with air source heat pumps. The good thing, we live in London, so heat pumps are, are, lose efficiency once they go over 55 degrees, but they also lose efficiency once they go below around about minus two. We don't often get that those kind of temperatures. And when you think the heating season, don't think of the freezing cold weather we had last month. That's that's a few days, really. You've got to think that actually the heating seasons often for many people start September, maybe October, runs, runs right through to April. In London, a lot of that time, it's well above, say, seven degrees. So your efficiency levels are going to be pretty decent on heat pumps living in London. Solar PV, uh, great scheme, going to be introduced by uh, Wandsworth Council. There's been trial schemes to that previously, so it's not like this is a new idea. So, so a lot of the teaming problems will have gone. I think five boroughs previously trialled this. I think Merton was one of those. So, you know, it's a good opportunity and there are economies of scale. If you go and buy a solar PV pack from wholesalers, it might cost, for instance, 45 pence per kilowatt hour. If you can buy those components in continuous amounts, it becomes a whole lot cheaper. It might be 36 pence. Um, you'll also get economies of scale from the installers. So, you know, if, if you're if you were doing this on your own, it might cost you 25 pence per kilowatt for the installer. The reality is on a big scheme like this, it might be 18, 19 pence. So there are really good good options there. As, as someone said, I think it was Ju Julia, maybe, or Julie. 
conservation area is a consideration. So you, you, you can't have it on the roadside, but you can have PV, say, in your back garden. So they are, there are, they are manageable. And I think there needs to be a bigger debate about PV and conservation and planning, really. And not just that with heat pumps, too. Heat pumps are considered permitted development unless you have more than one. Um, the big thing about PV is you've got to think about your on-site consumption now. There is no longer a subsidy, there's no more feeding tariff, so you kind of want to use as much as you can because what you're using is displacing something you might be paying 14 to 18 pence for. If you start exporting, the best you're going to get is probably around about 5p from one of the, the, the suppliers. So don't make these systems too big unless you can back it up with battery storage and time of use tariffs and there is a real good opportunity with time of use tariffs there if you look at something like octopus's agile tariff if you avoid four till seven that tariff comes out around about 9p which is really really good for your electricity but also think about if you've got a heat pump you know 300 percent heat pump would then be heating your home at 3p so time of use is going to be an increasingly important way of shifting people's demand and therefore needing less generation at peak period. Um, so we're really excited by time of use and what it could potentially mean. Uh, and it, it's really good if you've got PV battery storage, you can miss that peak period and have a very low running cost the rest of the day. One final slide from me, I think. So some of the more minor measures that are easier are, first one's got to be LED lights, because if you've got the typical golf ball bulb in the picture here you can install those yourself and if you go to one of the online wholesalers rather than going to the supermarkets you can pick them up for around about two pound fifty a bulb um if you buy a whole lot of them they tend to discount by sort of two to five to ten percent depending on how many you're buying if you're going to have recess lighting like the you know halogen spots that many of us have in our home today you will need an electrician to come on site he will have to or she will have to Take out your old ones, change your transformers because the the the, the uh, watts are so much lower. You don't need such a big transformer, so there is a cost there. Estimates on that are probably somewhere between twenty five and thirty pounds per per fitting, just to give you an idea. Two other technologies, um, probably the most basic one is the smart thermostat, and and really that's about learning and controlling your thermostat. So it will start to learn how long it takes to heat your house to get to a temperature. And therefore, it can make those those judgments. You can also control the thing remotely. So if you're stuck at work and you're not going to be home, you can actually say, OK, I want you to come on an hour later. So reasonable control, but not total control. What smart TRVs do, and TRVs are the, the little one to sixes that you have on your radiators, they give you much more individual control of zoning. So currently, your heating's probably just kicked in. You're now heating your bedroom when you're not going to be up there for another two, three hours. So actually, by having timers and temperature controls, you can change when you heat and how much you heat. So bedrooms typically under sort of regulation should be 18 degrees. Corridors should be 19 degrees. Living area should be 21, bathrooms 22. Having these smart TRVs, you can actually set those levels or set your own comfort levels. And then you can set the times when they come on in different areas. So they give you much more direct control than the smart thermostats do and they'll save you more so you know on the energy saving track they're talking about 15 percent. i wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't higher just to having that individual ability so there's some fairly basic uh technologies there they're pretty well um uh um adapted now so it's not like you're, you're taking new technology on that might not work these things do work they they run pretty well things like smart trvs the only maintenance you will really have is probably change the battery in them every couple of years. So pretty low cost to maintain as well there are afterwards. Uh, that's us. One very, very quick thing. Uh, we have a movie we're showing on the 21st of uh, March called Kiss the Ground. And it's all about the earth and how important that is to climate change. And we'll be having a big discussion afterwards about things like composting and recycling and all those kind of things. So if you can make it, check out our website. And it's all part of the conversation, really. Thank you for your time. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Toby. We really appreciate you coming along and sharing your uh, expertise and knowledge. Um, that's, that's really, really good. Um, so now uh, we're going to open up to uh, questions. So we've had quite a few in the chat already. 
Um, so I think we might address some of those first. So uh, there's been a few questions around planning permission in conservation areas uh, to do external wall insulation and also to do um, solar panels. And so um, the advice is always check if, you, if you're in a, a conservation area, then uh, get in contact with planning and ask and have a conversation with them about actually what's required. Um, a lot of the information is available on the website in terms of what's available and, and what's allowed in in conservation areas. But if you're not really sure, then I'd say uh, ask um, about what exactly is permitted. Uh, uh, as Toby said, generally, if uh, the solar panel is facing onto the street, generally that would be not be uh, allowed but it, it's worth having a conversation around that and um, same with external wall insulation uh, i'm not entirely clear on uh, i'm sorry i'm not entirely sure about exactly what you need to do but i would say get in contact with planning around that um there was also um uh, a question here around air source heat pumps and whether they work better with underfloor heating or larger radiators. Um, Toby, I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about they, that. They do, yeah. Because of that, that that comment I made about running up to sort of 50, 55 degrees, then they start to lose efficiency. Where they're really efficient is at 35 degrees and underfloor heating is a maximum of 35 degrees. So if you can have underfloor heating through your whole property, you, you're, you're, you'll be a much more efficient. So you might see, say, 400% efficiency at uh, 35 degrees and 350% efficiency at 55 degrees. So what that means is for every unit that's coming in of electricity to power that thing, you're getting four units of electricity coming out of that 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 system. And I think that that's, that's really key. So because when you're looking at the economics, it's somewhere between that 450 and, uh, sorry, uh, 350 and 400, where the economics start to kind of stack up against gas. So yes, underfloor heating, much better option. If you're doing a rebuild, go for underfloor heating through as much of the house as you can as possible and, and go with a heat pump that way. Fantastic, thank you, Toby. Uh, so there's a question here from Ruth around, how many homes would need to make the switch uh, to meet ones with climate action plan ambition to be, ambition to be net zero? Um, so, our, uh, our ambition uh, around net zero is actually around our operations rather than the borough as a whole. Um, but we are um, actively trying to reduce the carbon emissions for the borough. Um, and so I don't know how many um, homes would need to be made to, to get to net zero, but it would be an awful lot. So I know that the, um, the Committee for Climate Change came out with their sixth bar carbon budget back in December 2020 and they highlighted the need for um, a, a really big increase in, in the number of heat pumps that need to be put into place um, uh, to, to do low carbon transition um, so that there's a lot more work that needs to be done so sort of you know we've got the green homes grant and that's kind of a starter um, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done to, to encourage people to, to do this and I think as it becomes more known this technology um, and as it become as more people kind of develop especially with installers and, and contractors develop the skills and knowledge around installing it will become much easier to access this and a lot cheaper as well um toby i don't know if, what your thoughts are around that sort of uh, what, what's happening with that yeah it's it's, it's a tough question isn't it um <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how how much we would have to do to get to the targets, really. But I think the main thing we we all need to do is, is to take on that we're responsible. Like I, I'm in a few groups, and people are talking about air quality, and they're talking about transport. But actually, one of the biggest problems with air quality is, is our gas flue emissions. So we can all have an influence on what we're doing by making these changes within our home, particularly, you know, swipping, swapping your gas boiler for a heat pump is one way of doing it. But if you can actually reduce the amount your, your gas boiler is running, you're also improving. So insulation, better windows, better doors, um, even putting a snake down at your front door is going to have an impact. You're going to improve people's local air quality as well as the carbon numbers by doing these measures. So I think we've all got to take steps. Great. Um there's a question here about what help is available for 
for flat dwellers. So just wanted to let you know that um, the Green Homes Grant um, is a scheme is available for flat dwellers. So if you are privately renting a, a, a flat or if you're an owner occupier in a flat, then you can access it. Um, there may be some restrictions depending on um, your leasehold arrangements and your and the freehold and stuff like that. And that very much depends on exactly what what the arrangements are for your property itself. So it might be that actually you wouldn't be able to put external wall insulation on because you might be on the top floor flat and then what happens with the rest of the building and stuff like that. But it's worth um, seeing if you're eligible and then if you think you are and, and if there's potential you think there's potential to to do some if, if you've had a quick look at your lease or you know what what's in the lease then um it's worth um worth applying and and get in contact with us if you think you're eligible for that and um, just but, on that one one thing we're checking is let's say if, if you've got a block of flats are you allowed to all invest your greenhomes grant into a communal heating system and we're checking that at the moment with Ofgem, trying to get an answer out of them. And Ofgem have now sent us to Bayes and said that's going to be a question for Bayes. So, so we're, we're asking Bayes next uh, what, what the answer is to that question. Because essentially, if you had a block of flats and you had 50 flats and they could all have £5,000, there's 250 towards a heating system there. That's the way you kind of get these flats done. So we're just checking the rules on that at the moment. And it's not clear within the, the current writing of the regulations. OK, fantastic. That's really good to know. Um, so I'm just going through some of the other questions. Um, uh, can you put solar panels on a flat roof? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, that's that's fine. So that's, that was from Ferdinand. Um, there's just sorry, I'm just going through. While you're uh, looking something. at that, I'll just add a point there. So you would have a ballast weighting system. So one of the things you will have to do is have a structural survey if it's a flat roof to make sure it can take the additional weight. It's not a huge amount of weight. It works out about 20 kgs per square meter. But that is a fact that you need to consider. Whereas on a normal roof, you don't necessarily have to have a structural survey if it's a pitch roof. Yeah. Um, and somebody asked about heat pumps going on a flat roof. And generally, that that's not normally where they go is it toby it's normally sort of on, on the no, ground but i think in london wall. where face in london where space is an issue and mm -hmm. people may not want them in the gardens this is something we're considering we think it's an option um two things to think about there again can it take the weight these things can often weigh 100 to 150 kg so uh that's a factor the other thing is the noise so they do create 60 decibels immediately on them that drops within two meters to around about 40 which is basically london background noise um so what we're looking at is things like them sitting on rubber chocks to take some of the vibrations away uh and maybe having outside your you know your bedroom window but maybe a little bit further away from your bedroom window on a flat roof but i i think it's potentially an option yes great uh and uh, jonathan in the chat had said about solar tiles uh, which could overcome concerns around conservation areas. Um, I, I don't know an awful lot about solar tiles, to be honest. I, I've heard they're expensive, but I don't know much else apart from that. Um, no, so, uh, I, I'll, I looked at I'll this. Run. I think you've got your hand up. I can see on the screen. And crew. Oh, you're on mute at the moment. Still on, oh, there you are. I think you're off mute now. Yes. I'm unmuting, I think. Can yes, people hear me? Are. I can hear um, you now. Um, yeah, on solar tiles, um, I defer to anybody in this room with greater technical knowledge, um, including Toby, but um, I was working for an installer until about 12 months ago. Um, you're absolutely right, uh, Andrew. They are slightly more expensive. I believe they're between 30 and 40 percent more uh expensive on a unit basis purely because you know they're a small they're smaller to manufacture and they're they're fiddlier to fiddlier to fit however in the chat line um jonathan i think uh, asked these questions so did judith chegwidden i've given one or two 
bit, uh, names of solar installers, including, uh, I mean, there's a firm in in um, in Wandsworth, in Ellsfield, uh, another firm in North London, who will quote you for solar tiles. Uh, and again, have, have a conversation. If you are in a conservation area, ask Wandsworth Planning Department what their attitude is to solar tiles in a conservation area, even on um, the, the front visible bits of your property. Great, thank you very much for that. that that's really good. And actually, that if, if other people want to contribute, please do um, raise your hands or, or chip in. Um, if, if you've got knowledge to share, um, please do so. That, that'd be really, really great. Um, there was a question here around um, what the council is doing to retrofit its own properties. And we are developing a decarbonisation strategy for our, um, our, our operational building so we're doing that at the moment um, so we, we've done energy audits uh, and so we can look at the energy use that we have in our buildings and then looking at what do we need to do to reduce uh, the the energy use and reduce our carbon emissions from the buildings there um, so so that's a really important thing for us we've got our uh, carbon neutral 2030 target and and the way to do we're going to do that is by reducing our carbon emissions from our buildings that's a really really big part of that um, so so we are working on that and we're, we're developing a plan for it um, so really sort of opening up to, to other questions that, that people may have um, if you want to use the raised hands function then please use that stick your hand up um, and uh, if you've got questions then we can go into it so we're thinking about why is this important what are the things you can do to save energy um, tips you might have around reducing energy consumption at home and um, also suffering renewable energy in the role of solar power so um, yeah um, Alban you've got your hand up um, not wishing to monopolize um, it's a it, it's a general question really to everybody in in, in the room um, younger people um, Wandsworth has Am I right in thinking quite a long, quite a youngish demographic of 20, 30 somethings? Yes, that's right. Um, I mean, not all. I, I'm thinking of Putney, but of course, you know, I mean, there's plenty of other much poorer parts of the borough. Uh, but um, it's, it's a bit ironic. I mean, Crew Energy does a lot of lot of very good work, including via Alex in uh, fuel poverty f with poor homes. But I just wondered if we can kind of go where the money is and what what are our strategies for engaging? Or what are what are the boroughs uh, strategies for engaging with younger, more affluent people thinking that I, they ought to be taking energy conservation much more seriously? Have I killed a conversation there? <laughs> um does any does anybody have any ideas about um, what how to raise um, how to raise that? Um, Suzanne, you have your hand up. Oh, you're on mute at the moment, Suzanne. Yeah, I'm curious yeah. as to what you mean by young. I mean, I've got children under forty. Well, they're still lucky to get on a property ladder at under forty. I mean, I've got okay. money and I'd like to do stuff, but I find it really, really difficult to find advice um where do i get external insulation who's a good person to go to about heat source pumps because it's all a bit new and the, the traditional trades people that i know and into all that stuff yet um but if i said to my children you know well i've just had to lend them money to to move to a bigger house so you know and that's out of london I've got an answer on that, or partial answer. Go for it. Um, uh, long, boring, uh, MCS, three initials, MCS. Uh, and this this is a, uh, I'm going to give give you the, 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 uh, the, the words that they stand for. The micro generation, terrible name, but that's the, that's the M certification that's the c scheme punch that into a web search engine and you'll see you'll see that um uh 
that comes up up with the website. That's the government's kind of approval body for effectively the trust mark thing that um, that Toby was talking about. But but those are accredited installers who will know the kind of technologies that we've been talking about here. Um, and have, have, have a play around, Suzanne, within the MCS websites, the micro ge generation. I'm sorry, it's a hell of a you, you'll have to yeah. spell it out <laughs> once and, and then and then you'll get in and then you'll get local installers. You know, they do split it off, I think, by by borough or by postcode and I they will I, know. I think I asked crew, but you're a bit busy. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't, Susan, sorry, I haven't seen anything from, from you. So we'll happily reach out because we do have people trained as domestic energy assessors and retrofit assessors, and we'll yeah. happily help you with things like heat pumps. Insulation wise, we can recommend people. But again, you know, the other thing to go for is the Trustmark website and look for people within your area on the Trustmark site for those kind of skills. So, but yes, if, if you drop us a note, uh, you know, either my email address here or um or the info button then so one one of us will contact you just addressing Auburn's point about how do we engage younger people um we have quite a lot of young members of crew actually which is great i mean i would say the vast majority of people are under 14 are in an organization but i think one of the things we're looking at is ideas like the watch parties we're running so getting them to watch movies and having discussions afterwards to try and engage them that way so i think we just have to try different things they're not necessarily going to come on to events like this so i think we need to find different ways of attracting via social media to get the hooks to get them interested and making them aware that there's groups like us available for instance that can help them on that path but i agree i'm sure lots of them are struggling to own a home in this area at the moment but still small measures like led lights and things like that all make a difference okay thanks a lot for that so um does anybody else? Ah, oh, I can see a hand going up. So I, I don't know if people are always um, familiar with the, the the team sort of tools that are there. But um, there's like a face and a hand in up in up towards the sort of like top right hand corner. And if you hover over that, there should be a raise hand there. And if you press that, then that would be really helpful because then I can see who's asking, who's putting the hand up to ask a question. Then I can kind of call on you. So fantastic. So uh, Miranda, you've got your hand up. Thank you. Um, just to, to follow on on uh, Suzanne's point, which I agree with, um, uh, if you're interested in this stuff, you come to these sort of sessions um, and it's brilliant. And I'm, I'm loving what you what was with doing all these these online sessions are fantastic. I'm learning loads. However, I do think that there is you know, when we're all out, allowed out of our rooms and houses, um, a, a place for perhaps ones with to even to have kind of uh, a, 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 like a high street center, a high street website or, or some uh, some place doing what I like what crew is doing and maybe maybe crew itself. But um, it, the, the point is, I don't know what to Google. I'm not sure I want to learn about this engineering stuff. I don't understand it. I just want to be warm. I want to know that my energy is 100 percent renewable energy. Um, and I, I want to know that it's just done and I'm happy to kind of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. learn a bit, but I'm never going to learn it all. And I'm, I'm yeah. interested in this stuff, you know. <laughs> uh, so I, I think if this is genuinely a, a, a really important thing that the housing stock and properties really need to make a big um, impact um, and quickly, then we all, you know, people who are not interested need to learn and and the installers and all these sort of things, they need to learn as well. But everyone, so it's, I, I don't know what to Google always. And um, so I do think that's there's something that once with council perhaps could at least direct people to that, you know, either to crew or to local installers or to this is what you need to know. All that sort of stuff is, is really useful. Anyway, well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and, and crew do run energy cafes um, and um, Toby Arben, I, I don't know if you're planning to, to run them sort of physically again once when, that's allowed. Once it's we safe. can't wait. If you ask Alex, <laughs> runs, she's on our call at the moment. If, if you ask her, yeah, I think everyone is really eager. We've, we've had funding from Wandsworth Council to train up, I think, 15 new members. And more than anything, I think they all want to go into libraries and civic centres and, and meet face to face with people and really try and help. Just in terms of the energy shop thing, we have been in conversation with 
centre court about whether we could take a, a, a space there as a pop up for a few months. It's, it's in the in the process of being bought at the moment, so we're not sure if it will happen. But we would love to do that maybe down at, at, at Southside, you know, and just have a pop up for a few months where people can come in, ask those kind of questions that Miranda is talking about. Maybe have a solar panel in there. Maybe have the shell of a uh, heat pump so people kind of get the scale of what these things look like and just spend some time talking through ideas with people. I think that's really a good idea. And I think it's really important that this becomes normal for people. You know, at the moment, it seems very, very distant and all very complex. And I think it can easily be demystified by people just coming and have a chat about this Absolutely. kind of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Arben, you've got your hand up. Uh, just, just to uh, um, endorse all of that 100%. And, it, and it'd be great maybe in a, in a moment or two, if, if we've got time, if Alex can tell us a bit about what, what does happen within uh, these kind of energy, energy advisory hubs. But my, my point is, is, is just another reply back to Miranda and Suzanne. You're absolutely right. I mean, nobody, nobody gives a stuff about this. You know, I mean, it, you know, getting a plum around is a, is a distressed purchase. You know, get, you think, thinking about air source heat pumps on, on on your on your roof nobody deep down you know i'm a greenie and you know i, lo I love tech um and I, I wish i was an engineer but fundamentally i don't even want to think that deeply about it my point is the inst the trade the installers the plumbers the electricians these guys off the the good ones certainly the mcs accredited ones certainly the ones on trustmark will be able to tell you free of charge Probably much more than you think. That's Thank really God. helpful. Thank you very much. Um, there's another hand, but I can't see who it is. So whoever's got their hand up, please just speak. I'm sorry, I I, I can't see the participant list. It you might show be me. Um, Paula Walker. Um, Hi. I'm one of the Labour councillors. Hi. Um, I'm just going back to what um, Suzanne was saying um, about not being able to afford your home. Um, yeah, I wonder whether we as Wandsworth Council can take some ownership for um, explaining to people about how much um, they will save with these energy. I mean, I know that Toby's um, crew energy cafes do really well with explaining about, you know, sort of fuel poverty and how to save money. But, you know, we've got bright side, we've got other ways of communicating. So even although, you know, we're passionate about the green aspect of this, actually the practical thing, if someone says, right, you're going to save 20 quid a month or whatever it is, then that's going to be significant. So could we think about doing some communication around that, Mr Hager? Yes, uh, we are planning on doing lots more communication around climate change and around energy and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, but specifically are... about fuel poverty and about um, about uh, money being saved. If if these new technologies are, you know, if we start, um, like you say, a, a snake at the door, um, you know, uh, get, getting some better insulation. Yeah. A bit more motivation, I think, that rather than just climate, um, you know, the, the practical stuff for people. Yeah, I mean, we're updating our website with more information. So following this, we're going to put up the recording of this session so that everyone can access it. And I think we're going to put some materials, links um, so that people can access that. So uh, as we do these things, we're going to be building the information that we're putting out there to, to help residents. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we, we are going to be putting more information up there um, and putting it out via social media as well. Um, so Green Hubs Grants, Solar Together, that's been in Brightside. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we are trying to tell people about this and, and using the tools that we have and, and, and hoping that people read them and pay attention to them and act upon them as well. Um, so uh, more hands are up from Alex. Alex Hartley. Oh, good evening, everybody. Yes, it's another person from Crew Energy. Sorry. Anyway, my bag is all about fuel poverty and the social aspects of um, decarbonising and helping lift people out of fuel poverty. So um, just to answer a specific question in the chat, um, if you're an owner occupier or a private renter, um, you, can you will be eligible for the £5,000 Green Homes Grant, um, which then once you've taken one of the first major measures, then it unlocks the second list of um, measures available, just to give you answer that question that just popped up. Um, 
and also you know we we do give we're pretty much happy to give energy advice to anybody um we do target the fuel poor which sounds really awful but um that's who it makes the most difference to but as i said in one of our comments you know we all need to decarbonize and yes those of us that can afford to pay for a retrofit assessor or an epc sort of with um extra bits bolted into it to help us decarbonize our own households that's great um but we can also help by giving a hand holding service through the kind of complicated maze of how to look at what you're paying, how you're paying, when you're paying, um, how much you're paying because your house leaks heat. And, you know, some people don't want to get too bogged down in that. They just want to be told the bare minimum and they can get out. Other people like getting, you know, we've got lots of energy geeks who like getting in amongst it and all on the details of everything. And, you know, they're, they're welcome to come and join us if they want to, because they can then geek out with the rest yeah. of us shadows. But basically, you know, it, it's now or never and you know this is why ones we're putting on conversations like this is really important but this just has to be the start of the conversation it you know we've got less than nine years to basically sort all of our buildings out otherwise we're in deep doo-doo so yeah all of you on here well done for giving up <laughs> your thursday night um, but we've got a big task ahead of us all thanks thanks just want to clarify that the stuff Alex was talking about in terms of the greenhouse grant that that's more around the voucher scheme that's being run nationally and there's also the scheme that we're running in Wandsworth which is targeting um those on lower incomes um so uh, yeah th there's a there's a difference uh, between the two schemes but yeah um so Ferdinand has his hand up Ferdinand if, if you want to ask a question make a comment please do so Ferdinand, you're on mute if you are speaking at the moment. Nope. OK, um, if, if you do want to, to, to speak, then please do uh, let me know. Just uh, pitch in. Um, Alban? Uh, uh, question. Um, uh, sorry, this is, is general knowledge quiz. We, we talk about fuel poverty uh, quite, quite a lot. Um, apart from the Alex and Toby and anybody else from crew in this room. Does anybody know technically what the definition of fuel poverty is? We do. I just wonder whether it, this is an experiment. Do other people know what fuel poverty is? Anybody want to jump forward with, you know, what's the what are the numbers for fuel poverty? Particularly councillors, Paul, Paula Walker from the Labour Party. I'm surprised you don't know this stuff. Right. Well, it depends whether you can pay your bills or not. You know, I'm not going not to say quite. some. Not well, quite. I would it, it, say it, it, that, th that right. is one of the issues, isn't it? It's whether you are um, yeah. compromising on what you're eating and going and not being able to turn on your heating. It's not necessarily, um, you know, what yeah. your income is. Eat or eat, I think that is the dilemma there. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. You couldn't be more right. Um, I'm I, I'm not a Labour member, but um, in 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 Mitchum and Morden, Siobhan McDonough. Uh, he's very he's, he's very hard on this. The answer to my to the question I've, I, I put I put to you and I, I'm not getting much of an answer. It's 10 percent of your disposable income or household. Disposable income. Alex is looking at the ceiling. Correct me if I'm wrong, Alex. Yeah, it, it used to be that. Um, but um, several years ago now, um, a new definition came in, which magically made millions of people Suddenly not in fuel poverty. Um, Toby's cracking up. Hopefully that's at that my unpolitical comment there. But um, it's now by something that's called LAHIC from Professor Hills, which is a low, uh, low, low, God, low cost, high bills. Um, no, high cost, low. Oh, crumbs. I'm too tired. This is my <laughs> seventh Zoom of the day. Sorry. Basically, um, it's actually getting reviewed again. Um, the Hills definition has been around for, I don't know, uh, seven years now. So basically, um, 
they have just kind of slightly stretched it out a bit again. But what you need to know for Wandsworth, you've got between sort of 10 and 12 percent of homes in fuel poverty in the borough and some really interesting work actually that the environment committee did um that uh assembly member leone cooper chair co-chairs i think and they found when you factored in the housing costs that suddenly jumps to 26 percent of londoners being mm. at in fuel poverty so so it's not a small but, number it's no small number and actually it's not just the stereotypical grannies carking it of um, respiratory or cardiovascular diseases anymore we can, it can be anybody and everybody you can't tell from even looking at their demographics whether people are struggling as Paula said with finding money for heating or eating it's you know in, in fact it's like the silent um, kind of epidemic if you like because people are too embarrassed to have people around they're staying in bed all day they can't put the heating on you get kids going is it a toast day or a cereal day because they've got no electricity to put the toaster on you know and it is getting more and more problems out there but that's why you know we've got two big challenges because i don't have a crystal ball but i don't think for the next few years things are going to suddenly miraculously be a lot cheaper and easier for people but by empowering people by a bit of education and some support and they can literally take the power back on their power bills Whew, sorry i love a pun um so basically there is help out there but it, it you know even if you go away from this meeting and what you tell one or two people that you know they might mention them worried about money or they've got a bit of debt or they you know can't believe how high their gas bill was just point them in our direction and my lovely trained energy champions will be delighted to help them save some energy and money that's really helpful for everyone to know that, that there is advice out there and, and that if people are struggling to, to pay their fuel bills and, and that that they can seek advice from themselves and, and crew do a really good job around that. So um, if you yourself uh, want more information or if you know somebody who might benefit from that, then please do get in touch with them. Um, they, they've got a, a really, really great service and, and, and we're really happy to, to work with them. Um, so um, just thinking about sort of energy tips um, and I, I need to sort of share what, what I think is a really big thing that people can do and that is a really really easy thing to do that you literally can do as soon as you leave this meeting is switch your electricity provider to um, renewable energy provider it's really really easy there's a, a good website called big clean switch um, so they actually um, were part of the um, the uh, ones with climate summit that we did back in november and and we had a, a, a talk that covered similar sort of areas as talking about here and greening your home um, and so they're really really good they've got a really simple tool that that lets you see how much you can you can save in terms of your money because quite often people have um, fuel tariffs that actually aren't the best things to be having really uh, they, they're not always the, the best ones the most efficient ones that the ones that can 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 save you money uh, and then you can have you can access that um, on, on the Big Clean Switch website. So that's really, really good. Uh, and I would recommend that you do that if you haven't already got um, a, a renewable energy tariff. Um, I've got a hand up from Annalisa. Hi, thanks, Andrew. Um, I, I also actually work for Wandsworth Council. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm one of the climate change leads, so this is very much my bag. Um, but I'm also one of the people on here who is in that under 40 bracket that um, we were talking Hooray! about earlier. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> I can see Alvin's uh, very happy with that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was actually just going to say exactly what Andrew did. I think one of, for me, um, you know, I'm, I'm not on the fuel poverty line, but equally I do find my bills have been really expensive and especially being a renter in London, um, it's there's, there's not a lot that you can often do to your house, but what you can do is like change your tariff. And so, you know, we're not just talking about fuel poverty, but also talking about like the poverty premium and the fact that that is, um, you know, people who are already living on like pretty low salaries um, can 
often be paying more than what higher income people are because they're stuck on these terrible tariffs that are basically just standard variable rate and they're they're on they're on the highest rates and switching is like the easiest thing you can do and I didn't do it for years and I didn't realize how much money I was going to save and once I did that I was saving like literally hundreds and hundreds like close to a thousand pounds a year um so yeah and the big clean switch is great because it's got a lot of renewable energy providers on there um, as well. So you're getting a renewable tariff and you're getting the benefit of that switch as well. And those renewable tariffs um, do tend to be at the moment, a lot of the a lot of the cheapest ones. So definitely recommend doing that. Um, I also really recently moved into um, a house that had lots and lots of what I found out were 60 watt and 70 watt light bulbs. Um, and I worked out that the cost of running one of those for a year was more expensive and just one of them and I had like 20 of these was like more expensive than buying new LEDs for replacing all of those bulbs. So um, just by replacing those bulbs and it cost me 30 or 40 pounds, um, I've saved not just um, the amount of money I would have spent on one of those bulbs, but I've done that kind of 10 times over. So that is also saving me this year, like a couple of hundred pounds easily. Um, and then the other thing that I do, which is not helping me in terms of reducing my bills in any way, but is helping me um, reduce the carbon that I'm using um, is and Andrew mentioned right at the beginning looking at you know what the mix of the of the national grid is at the moment so the electricity that we're using um, is is made up of, of gas and solar and wind and sometimes coal depending on like the time of day um, and depending on what day it is so um, often you'll find that overnight it's really windy so we're actually we're actually using a lot of renewables at that point of time and if more of us are using Using renewables um, at, at those periods of time so we can like switch the time that we're using our electricity then that helps to manage like the national grid overall and reduce um, how much gas we're putting on there so for example I can go on to um, that carbon intensity website and I can see that um, for example tomorrow it's actually better for me to run my dishwasher or my tumble dryer or my washing machine um between like 10 and 12 o'clock in the morning and actually i shouldn't be using those between kind of 6 and 8 p.m tomorrow um and those are just little things that you know don't help me sell money save money but help the the country overall um but yeah i, I thought some basic tips on when you have very little ability to do anything might be helpful for other people on this call Bravo! Bravo! Okay, thank you very much, Annalisa. Really appreciate your input on that. Uh, insightful as ever. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, so are there any other comments or questions? I'm going to ask for non-crew ones because you, you've <laughs> been chatting a lot and it's been wonderful um, to, to share all that information. But um, I was going to ask for, um, for if there's any other people out there who've got any comments or questions, um, just um, either put your hand up using the, the raise hand function or um, just unmute yourself, uh, to be honest, and, and, and ask away. Uh, Fergal, I can see you popped up on the screen. How you doing? Yeah, just, just a question on uh, renters. So carrot and stick approach going on here. You know, we've got we've got to decarbonize to zero carbon, so we know where we need to get to. You know, you talk, I know you talk about heat pumps, which is fine, but like realistically, we we need to do the whole housing stock, and that's uh, old housing stock, new housing stock, uh, social housing, flats, yeah. whole house refurbs. You know, we're talking like a massive amount of work. You know, that's going to take you know 10, 20 years to actually roll this out across the burn around the whole country. Yeah, and we've got the issues of who's actually going to pay for it and how it's going to be paid, yeah. and the carrot and stick approach is going to happen. So, you know, low hanging fruit, the fact that we've got now people living in E and F rated rented a prop, uh, rented accommodation in Wandsworth, and I think Wandsworth Council have an obligation to start putting in uh, licenses in place for landlords. Where they have to actually carry out energy efficiency, even right down to the likes of, you know, um, double glazing their properties, mm. rolling out uh, better, um, you know, heating controls and all the things that you're saying. 
so and also then it needs to be like a grant in place as well and education because it's fine as there's what 40 people on this call and collectively we need to get the you know 100,000 people who actually own their properties and live in the properties on board in this so this is a very kind of closed conversation with people who understand what's actually going on in the uh, you know our energy transition so we need mm -hmm. to kind of really ramp up the education ramp up i like the idea of somebody mentioned ha of having these uh, energy stalls i think maybe ones or council could get one of these empty buildings and actually open up a uh, energy store where it's actually people can just walk in and get advice and have information there of different um, schemes in place um, you know, in schools as well, uh, education across the schools needs to be rolled out. This is going to, this, this, this isn't a quick, quick fix. This is going to take a very long time. It's going to take a lot of money. It's going to take a lot of resources. It's going to be hardship because it's going to be, there's going to be winners and losers. People, people are going to have to actually pay for things they don't want to pay. And people are going to have to get educated of actually why they have to transition to something they don't understand as well. So, but I think, I think a couple of good starting points would be you know um putting more uh, laws in place or actually you know going after landlords like I, I rent here in wandsworth so i actually can't do anything with my property mm -hmm. and i've got windows with huge gaps in them and i've been chasing my landlord for five years to change them even of you know mm -hmm. i used to be a surveyor and i've even given them a design and quotes and he's just point blank refused to do it so, yeah. and uh, yeah we just take up plastic every uh, you know every <laughs> every winter it's, it's just it's just crazy and if there was a law in place where they had to get the property up to you know at least C, D or C to rent it you know and you charge them actually uh, a tariff if they're renting substandard accommodation so just a couple of ideas out there um so the government is actually um doing consultation at the moment on raising the minimum epc to C which means that landlords um, would need to improve energy efficiency. Um, so, so that's currently out to consultation. Um, so it might be that there's, um, uh, oh, sorry, they're, they're reviewing the response, I think, to the feedback. I've just got a message about that, because uh, I couldn't remember exactly what the status is of it. But um, there's been some consultation around it. There are some plans around that. So, so that could well shift in the future, and that will provide more incentive for landlords to um, to, to to change. There's already regulations around um, you can't have a G property and um, where that is brought to the attention of um, our um, regulated services uh, people, then, then they can they do have powers to enforce. There's not a, a licensing scheme as such, um, but but that that's sort of the, the closest thing that 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 there is. Um, so that that's that's um, something that we do have. Um, just trying to think of other things that you raised because uh, I've forgotten all the points. Um, but but the stuff around engagement, um, we, we are doing more around engagement. So if we, we, we're doing these online sessions because this is all we can do at the moment. Um, but we are doing, like I said before, we are doing more comms around um, climate change generally, around energy as well. So um, we are planning on doing more around this uh, and you will see more and more of that. And it is a long term strategy. It is a long term approach. Our target is 2030 for being carbon neutral uh, as an organisation. And that is not going to happen in the next couple of years because it's going to take some time to get there. And likewise, with um, with the borough as a whole, it is going to take some time. Um, we're talking about some big behaviour shifts that are needed from people across the borough across the country um so that's not going to happen overnight but we are we are committed to this very much so uh, and committed to, to 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 working with the residents on that so um we're going to be doing more stuff like this other things as well we're going to try and change it up a little bit so it can be um interesting um but yeah th there's some really great suggestions there so thank you very much for all um Ferdinand you've got your hand up did you want to say anything If you want to unmute, uh, then feel free to to contribute. No. S sorry, okay. I had my hand up, but I'm not quite. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Hi. Were you asking me? 
Yes. yes. Oh, right. Sorry, I'm not quite sure. One of my kids has put up an odd name. Um, my, my question was just recycling of, of food waste in, in, in domestically in houses. When is that? Sh I know a, lot, a number of other London boroughs do that. It seems to me that's a terrible waste. Um, wh when is that scheduled for or what is the plan so around? We, we're doing a food trial, um, a food waste trial, collection trial um, very soon. Um, so, so we're going to be doing that very, very soon. The, the similar to what they do in Camden, places like that? Yeah, it's, it's some sort of what other boroughs do. Um, so, yes, we'll, we'll be starting that food trial um, soon. And then, and then, and then the borough's ongoing. So that then won't end up in landfill. What the what the borough then does? No, nothing. Nothing goes to landfill. It all um, residual waste goes to energy from waste. Okay, very plants. good. Thank you. So n none of it goes to landfill. It hasn't for a number of years actually. None of it at all. No, none. It all goes to energy from waste. Great. Um, That's the most inefficient so way of getting rid of food waste. Incineration. Yeah, yeah, it's. Um, and we're asked. doing a, a food trial imminently. Um, are there any other questions? OK, um, I think if not. So can um, I can ask you a question? Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Are, are you planning on doing any like um, whole house or whole block uh, refurb? like getting um you know uh social housing or, or a council block of 50 houses and, and doing like a whole they, they do they did them in east germany in germany they roll them out of um doing uh solid wall installation and replacing all the boilers with like district heating systems yeah so uh, on our social housing stock um, what we're currently doing is, is starting um, a, a stock condition survey of all of our uh, properties so that we understand the condition of them and so that we know what needs to be done in, in terms of retrofitting them. Um, so, so that's going on now and then we can plan out exactly what needs to happen around that. And also we're actually using the Green Homes Grant um, as a pilot for a few social housing properties to, to, to see sort of like actually what can be done with them and, and making sure that we've got the knowledge and, and the experience in terms of doing that as well. Um, so we, we, we're doing, we are working on that and there are plans to, to, to do more on that as well. That's actually set out in our um, uh, climate change, uh, in the um, Wandsworth Environment and Sustainable, Sustainability Strategy Action Plan that was uh, renewed um, in at the February committee meeting. So I think somebody put a link in the chat. I think my colleague Amy put that in the chat. Um, so so uh, please do go and have a look at that. Um, you may Andrew. not want to look at all of it because there's quite a lot in there because climate change covers a, a wide range. But uh, yeah, that we are planning on, on doing something around that and, and that will drive down emissions for the borough. Other councils are already doing it. If if I'm going to butt in here, in answer to to Fergal's Fergal's point, um, and big up to the Wandsworth Green Massive who are who are heavy here tonight. I think um, Portsmouth Council, Andrew, Annalisa, do Google what Portsmouth Council are doing already in their directly managed social housing stock. Um, Portsmouth, uh, uh, Fergal mentioned passive house insulation uh, being being done in Germany, which is where the passive house standard came from. Portsmouth, six or seven years ago, did an entire tower block of I think about eight or nine stories to as a retrofit. I think it was a 1960s tower block in Portsmouth to passive house um, system, uh, to pa passive house standards. That was six or seven years ago. Google it. Google what they're doing now, because I think in one of the trade papers, either today or yesterday, I read something that Portsmouth City Council are taking that much deeper, much further into their entire directly managed housing stock. And, and candidly, the fact that, um, uh, again, going back to Fergal's point about social landlords, the fact that um, you know, the government are now consulting and bless you, Wandsworth are, are obviously you know, exceeding to what Whitehall is asking you to do, and that's fine. But the fact that the government is now asking if we can possibly consult about getting private landlords to rent out to something less than icebox standard is scandalous. Germany, you know, you wouldn't have got 
private renters, <coughs> you know, 20 odd years ago in the kind of properties that Fergal's talking about. Hmm. Well, like I said, that there was consultation on it and, and we can only enforce what is the law and what the regulations are. Um, so, so that is where, where we do have uh, limitations. Um, so we're going to wrap up now because it is a new 25 past seven. Uh, feedback that you've got is really helpful in terms of shaping our, our, our future ones that we're going to do because this this was was the first one that we've done. Obviously, we did the ones with Climate Summit uh, back in November, but this is the first of our series of climate conversations. So I just want to say thank you very much to everyone. Thank you for coming along. I really, really, really hope that this has been useful for everyone. And thank you very much to Toby, Arthur, Alex, from crew for coming along really pre appreciate um you giving up your time for, for this and also for uh for all the work you do um in Wandsworth and and for providing all that energy advice and support to people uh, it's really appreciated so thank you very much